In my last video, I mentioned that I have been taking a break from social media thus far in 2023, and that is something that I do somewhat regularly. Um, YouTube is a relatively new platform for me, but I've been posting on Instagram and on my blog for years now. And as cheesy as it seems to me to announce social media breaks, I found out last time when I took an extended break in 2021 that it really is necessary because if I don't announce it, then people get really worried and are reaching out to my friends and family and asking if I'm okay. And even when my family tells them I'm okay, then they don't necessarily believe it. So this time I figured I better just make an announcement. And I did that on Instagram. At that time, I wasn't sure exactly how long this break would be. I just knew that I needed some time to step back and think about a couple of things and potentially make some big changes for our family. So I'll talk about all of that in a minute, but first let's just do a quick little update on the farm. Honestly, we are in a really good place. We're in a really good groove and I'm really content with everything that we have going on here on the farm. So we really haven't added anything new since I've been gone. When we first moved out here in 2017, I thought I wanted all of the animals and I thought I basically wanted to live as close to being off grid as possible, which LOL, here we are six years later. I was wrong. I do not want that. I have come to realize. We have figured out that we actually enjoy living a very in-between life. We are definitely not cut out to be extremists. So yes, I love making all of my food from scratch at home and I see the benefits of that, but I also love eating burgers and fries at the ballpark when my boys have ball games. I love my daily routine of milking and hanging clothes on the line and homemaking, but I also really like going on family vacations. So I have figured out that less is really more for us. So I don't need goats and cows. For me, a couple of cows will do to keep us in milk. I don't need ducks and chickens. Chickens are good. I get eggs and meat from chickens. Um, I don't need to grow like every single variety of pole bean in Baker Creek's catalog. You know, a couple, one or two tried or and true varieties will do. So, you know, these are all lessons that I uh, have had to learn the hard way over the last few years. I'm not saying that we will never add anything new here on the farm. We may. I mean, Lord willing, we have a lot of years ahead of us. I'm just saying that right now, we're really content. Now, there are a few new developments on the farm, so I'll tell you about that. I did order 32 new chicks this year. Um, I hatch my own chicks. We've got a lot of chickens. I don't even know, maybe like 30 plus hens and a few roosters, and you know the roosters have their own little flocks, and they're totally free range. They just live like all over the farm. So you'll see like a rooster and his five or six little hens living over in this barn and another one over in this barn. So um, sometimes they hatch their own chicks, but I have an incubator and I, I hatch chicks as well. However, this year I ordered new chicks. And for the first time, I did not select breeds based on egg color. I really like a colorful egg basket and I will always keep colorful layers in my flock, but I selected the breeds based on winter Hardiness. I wanted chickens that were going to lay really well through the winter months. I have a lot of like the typical most popular heritage breeds like Rhode Island Red and Barred Rock and those are somewhat reliable in the winter months. They'll give you a few eggs here and there but you know our flock is very well nourished, very healthy. I give them diatomaceous earth. I do all the tricks, all the things. They get plenty of sunshine and fresh air. You know they're free ranged. Um, they get good feed in the winter. And for the last couple of years, I've gotten no eggs in the winter, which I, I preserved some from, you know, spring and summer when they were plentiful. So that was fine. But I really like having fresh eggs in the winter. So these two breeds that I got are uh, light Brahmas and white Orpingtons. And they're supposed to lay consistently through the winter months. So I'm hopeful, not holding my breath. We'll see. And I will update you guys on that in the spring. 
and let you know if they actually did lay through the winter. As far as my cows go, they are doing great, looking great. I think they're both pregnant. I know for sure one is pregnant. I'm really hoping both are pregnant. And this is actually the first time that we have uh, crossbred with an Angus bull. So in the past, we actually had a Jersey bull and we got rid of it because all the rumors are true. <laughs> Jersey bulls are awful. They're terribly mean and dangerous and you do not want one. <laughs> I thought maybe if we got one young and handled him and trained him well that it would be different for us. That was not the case. We got ours when he was only a few months old and we handled him every single day. But the older he got, the meaner he got. And it just got to be <laughs> really dangerous. I have a scar on well, one of my fingers here from one time I was out in a pasture working halter breaking one of my cows and he was you know off in the distance well one of my little kids saw me out in the pasture and they, they know better than to go out in the pasture alone but he saw me out there and he wanted to come to me so I turned around and I saw him running for me saying mommy calling my name and then from the other end of the pasture I see the bull running for him I was pregnant at this time too so I take off running I'm like oh my goodness I was terrified. I took off running, grabbed my son, and ran to the nearest fence and threw, chucked him over the fence and jumped over myself. And anyway, my hand just caught uh, the fence cap and sliced it wide open. It was nasty. Um, so I was pretty ticked off after that, and I was kind of done with him. And shortly after that, um, my husband's a really big guy. He's 6'5", like 245 pounds. He got my husband down on the ground and almost killed him. So after that, we were done. We got rid of him immediately, and we will never own another Jersey Bull. I am not sad to say. Uh, I don't miss him at all. However, I do miss having uh, purebred Jersey calves because a purebred A2, A2 Jersey heifer brings in a good little profit. However, we only ever got one heifer. <laughs> we always ended up with bull calves. And that's fine. You can either sell the bull calves if they're purebred Jersey, or what we did is we just fed them out and butchered them. And um, Jersey meat is actually not that bad at all. It's actually really good. We have not been able to tell the difference. We've really enjoyed our Jersey meat. However, this time our girls are crossed to an Angus bull. So now I'm actually hoping that we get bull calves and we can feed them out and just have a bigger animal that will provide more meat for us. But since I'm hoping for that, I'm sure there'll be heifers. It seems like that's always how things work. Either way, it'll be fine. We can still, um, that still makes a good, a good milk cow. A Jersey Angus cross is, is a good, fine milk cow. So then I would just sell them. I showed you guys our fair pigs on my last video. They're looking really good. They're filling out nicely. We have about six weeks until the fair. Uh, my kids are in 4-H, so if you don't know how that works, they have to tag uh, one or two pigs when the pigs are pretty small, and then they have to feed them to a certain weight by a certain date. So there's a lot of calculating and, and watching and, and mindfulness that goes on there. So we're kind of in the home stretch where the kids really have to keep a close eye on the pig's feed and their weight to make sure that they pass the weigh-in day and so they can actually show them and sell them and make money off of them, which is the goal. If I'm not too busy during fair week, then maybe I will take my camera along and just vlog all of that. I don't remember. I might have done that last year. You can look back in my videos and see if I vlogged fair week with the pigs last year. If not, I'll try to do it this year because it is, it's really fun for the kids. Other than that, there's really not too much new going on here on the farm. We are just doing normal farm chores and enjoying our summer. Speaking of summer break, I mentioned earlier that I took this social media break to really think about a few things and maybe make some changes for our family. And one of those things has to do with homeschooling. So we're on break from homeschool right now. Of course, the kids still do their summer reading. And if there's like a subject that they need work on, then I'll 
you know, make them do a little bit over the summer. But other than that, we enjoy a full summer break. However, we might be making some changes. Um, I'm still going to be homeschooling, but earlier this year, we made a very big change for our family. This is something we're very excited about and really enjoying, but it's also something that I know will be um, potentially not very well received um, or not understood by a lot of people. So I have kind of wanted to protect our space during this time so that we can be happy about this change before we have to defend it. And um, that is that after six years of being Protestants, we have returned to the Catholic Church. I'm so excited and so happy about this, but I'm also still kind of in shock because I was born and raised Catholic and I thought I would never say those words. I thought I would never come back. So it's kind of shocking to me. Um, but yeah, it's a good thing. It's a really good thing. So that will affect our homeschooling. I still have a lot of the tried and true materials that I've used in the past that I'll be using, like, you know, basics like math and spelling and stuff like that. But I'm gonna be making a few changes. So our history, our religion, our Bible study, things like that, I'm switching over to Catholic materials. So this is new for me, but I'm excited. The kids are excited. Um, and if you have questions, feel free to ask in the comments section. Um, I can't promise I'll answer them all because I'm just not in a space where I want to debate or anything like that, but um, I'll try to answer as many as I can. So on to the last topic of the day and the other change that I have made, the thing I needed to think about earlier this year. Well, let me rewind. So I've been a mom for about 12 years and for all of that time, social media has been a thing and I've pretty regularly shared about my kids. Not, I've never been an extreme overshare. I've never been at like a mommy blogger where all of my content is centered around my kids or I'm sharing crazy things about them or making them make reels and videos. I've, that's just never been what I have done. But they've been, um, you know, they've made really regular appearances. I've um, just shared about them, posted about them and didn't really give it much thought. But now that my oldest kids are getting older, my oldest is 11, um, 11, 10, seven, one, my older kids are getting bigger. I, I'm becoming more and more, I've become more and more unsettled all the time as far as sharing them online. And I, this isn't something that I was really able to articulate why I was feeling this way. And this is one of the reasons I stepped away from social media. I'm like thinking, do I even want to be on social media? I'm feeling so unsettled. Oh, I just can't, I don't know about all this. Well, several months back, I decided I was just going to take down most pictures and content that featured my kids. It took me a couple of hours to come through my Instagram and Facebook, but I took down most of the content with my kids and I instantly felt so relieved, but I still couldn't totally articulate why I was feeling that way. And so I just kind of didn't think about it anymore until fast forward a few months, I came across an account on Instagram called Mom Uncharted. Maybe you guys have already heard of her. If not, look this account up. This mom is putting all of the feelings I had into words and content, sharing on the ethics of sharing kids online. Now, a lot of her content is focused on like mommy bloggers who are very, very kid centric. Um, like I, I was never in that category, but she has just shared so many things that have given me a new perspective and helped me articulate why I was feeling unsettled um, about sharing a lot of my kids' private information online. So moving forward, I'm not saying that you won't see my kids make an appearance in the background of my video or run by behind me or that I'll never share a family photo or something like that because I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with that. But I'm just going to be a lot more thoughtful about what kind of content I share online in regard to my kids. I want to try to respect their privacy and their right to just have a childhood where they grow up and they're not always on camera. So I know this might be an unpopular opinion, but please don't take this as me like mom shaming because up until a few months ago, I, I was literally doing these things. I was sharing things that now that I have new perspective, 
I don't plan on sharing. I don't think I was then a bad mom. I think I just hadn't thought it through. You know, smartphones, social media, this is all just very new in the grand scheme of history. And I think a lot of us just haven't, it's like hit us so fast, we haven't totally taken the time to think it all through. And um, you know, we're all doing our best. We all love our kids. We're all learning. And I just share this in case any of you guys out there watching have had these feelings or reservations about sharing your kids online, but you don't quite know how to articulate that, check out Mom Uncharted on Instagram and let me know what you guys think about this topic in the comments. Okay, well, I think that is it for today's update. I hope you guys have a great week and I will see you soon.